And what happened to people during lockdown is unforgivable. Yeah. People should be held to account. Politicians who legisl- and this just this week, the Scottish government have, pa- have passed into law now, giving themselves further powers to lockdown again, Mike to reintroduce lockdowns. This week, they've given themselves the power to do it again. Yeah. Well, Nicola Sturgeon will do a new lockdown where you're only allowed out of the House as long as you vote for uh, independence. And if you don't, you won't be allowed out. I mean, that's the thing. As for old Professor Pants down, you know, Ferguson uh, locked everybody else down except for him and his uh, friend from Germany who happened to be married to some other bloke who he, he popped over to visit from time to time. Well, Nicola Sturgeon, she seems to be on this kind of mission at the minute. You've got me on her now. I mean, she is the w- wicked bitch of the North for me. Isn't I mean, she? She got this idea, 2014, a referendum was held, the people of Scotland said no. Yeah. And they were told that... Uh, was, that the one that was that the once in a generation referendum you're talking well, about? Well, the, the, the power that she had to hold that referendum was given under Section 30, which Westminster reserves that as a reserve power. It's not a devolved power. In fact, the Scottish government used it uh, on other occasions, Section 30, for example, yeah. lowering the vote in age, giving criminals the right to vote, giving mm. foreign nationals the right to vote. Here in Wales, they had the same powers there. But they have no legal right to change constitutional matters unless no. Westminster grants it to them. But this woman seems to think she can do what she wants, when she wants. And let's not forget, Mike, this is the lady who said we need to cut doors in schools shorter to stop the spread of COVID. Absolutely right. <laughs> I mean, that was quite an extraordinary manoeuvre, isn't it? She's definitely been in too long. She's gone mad. She's done some bit of a Bernie Eccleston, I think, up in Scotland, isn't she? Yeah, but, but she's the longest serving first minister Scotland ever had. So I don't know what's wrong with the Scottish people. I mean, look, like the SNP have got, obviously got a majority with the Greens. They're in a coalition, more yeah. or less. And she wants this referendum, and she's not going to stop. Now, they're taking it to the Supreme Court. It'll get kicked out. My, I, my opinion is I don't think it'll go anywhere. But even then, it's still it's, it's an illegal referendum. You can't have one. And this is a woman, let's not forget as well, who talks about democracy but hates Brexit. She loves open borders, being part of the European Union, but she wants to create a border in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> she's, in many ways, she's in many ways the Halifax Bank of... Uh, uh, of democracy, isn't she, and of politicians, because like them, she says, we're very inclusive, unless you don't agree with us, in which case uh, you can get lost. Well, yeah, that's Harley Faxon it with uh, Gemma, who, with the pronouns. Yeah. I did see, you had a bit of a rant about this, uh, I think, on Talk <laughs> TV last night. I did. But enough said about that. And let's be quite honest, you know, you need to keep this stuff out of businesses. Why, why is it even there? Mm. This war culture has invaded, you know, public sector, private sector, banking industry, education. Leave it there. We don't care about your flags or your pronouns. Can we just get on with doing life and looking after people, yeah. regardless of what they uh, what, what they consider themselves to be? You know, if, if you want to call yourself a bloke, fine. You want to call yourself a woman, fine. But don't make us, you know, want to accept the things that you're throwing at, at, at us at the same time. Mm. No, absolutely right. Let's do a quick one on uh, on the babies in the House of Commons because um, uh, old Stella Creasy has been campaigning so that she can bring her baby into the House of Commons. It seems like for years and years and years. It seems like she has a new baby every so often just so she can keep the campaign going. You know, but Lindsay Hoyle has now said, no way, uh, Jose, thank you very much indeed. Babies do not belong in the chamber. He's right, isn't he? Yeah, well, well, as a father of five children, I can assure you, Mike, the last thing on my mind would be taking my kids to work with me, right? <laughs> I'm glad they stayed at home. And let's be honest, this is, you know, the, the heart of government here and taking a baby into work. How many people can afford that privilege? Yeah. And then on £85,000 a year, they can afford care costs, you know, child costs, all those things. Most of us in this country cannot take babies into work with us. So this isn't a sexist thing or, you know, against women, anything right. like that. It's a simple fact. It's not practical. It shouldn't happen. And they're right this, this this review that they've had, I, I think it's the right thing to do because you shouldn't have babies inside the chamber there in, in the House of Commons. No, you're absolutely right.